Hi there. Hi there. <laughs> Second attempt. Oh my god, I don't even want to talk about it. It's so funny. I I love it when the things that we try to do go well. Um, but I can't wait for that to just happen. You know, one day. One. Day. If my audio sounds weird, if the lighting is weird, that's just a part of the experience yeah. of today's of today's episode of today's um article discussion. Mm. We haven't done one of these babies in a long time, and and I think we. You know, and, and when you were like, here's, here's an art history thing that I think would be interesting. I went, Oh, wow. That's, that's fascinating. Well, well, it's gonna, it's gonna disappear in the annals of, of art history. And then it was one of the most important things on my Instagram feed for like a week straight. So your yeah. finger on the pulse. This episode, not, but you and Vivo on top of it. <laughs> a a strong this- member. I think this episode will come out also a bit, like a, a bit later than the craze of the uh, the article. So hopefully we can give it a little bit more another push. Yeah, I mean, listen, it just means that there's more content for you to go and Google and be like, oh my god, um, the Met promises to have more information. Spoilers: the Met promises to have more information soon. So maybe, maybe there's more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm Elena. And I'm Stephanie. <laughs> and this is Bet You Wish This Was an Art Podcast. Welcome. <laughs> I stole your line. You Whoa. did, actually. Did it feel, <laughs> did it feel different? Did it feel stolen? I felt powerful. <laughs> Isn't it kind of sexy? Yeah. 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 No, I, there's a reason why I, I do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh. I don't know. Dominant? Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm. Babe. No, but listen, I, 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 I have to redeem myself. I feel like my reading comprehension every single day gets worse and worse, right? Like the elasticity of a human brain is supposed to be so supple and so exciting. And like your twenties to thirties is really when you're like in your zone and you've, you've put all this work and energy into it. And then I literally cannot for the life of me, say things correctly or read things correctly. And, and don't even get me started on like memory retention. Oh my God. And, I was, and yeah. No, no. I, I, I was thinking this today. I had a little, an existential breakdown. You know how it nice. goes. Nice. I um, do. <laughs> but <laughs> like every time I have to record or edit or, our recordings. Yeah. I get so stressed out because I just keep <laughs> rambling in the vi- in the in the everything. In the in the everything. In the everything. I just ramble so much and then I speak so much with ums. I hate I hate it. And then yeah. My memory is <laughs> shite. It's, it's I am it's just fish. it's it's actually opposite i love listening to our episodes especially the ones that we've edited and released and usually have like one or two other people like you know look at them first and and then i'll I'll go and i'll listen to it um i was re-listening to our yukioe episode and i was like mm. wow we're really smart sounding sometimes sometimes <laughs> we are i don't know how i don't know how it's just Some out of miracle. the moment stars align <laughs> Mercury's not in retrograde. Fuck. Well, that's actually yeah. Listen, <laughs> I I I didn't want to attribute it earlier, <laughs> but I am going through it right now, and I do need a little bit of sympathy. I need a little bit of um, grace. I need you to uh, you know gently uncover the layers of my meaning behind uh, the shadow of a planet. So many million miles away. Yeah. Mm. Well, we are chained <laughs> to our existence on this earth. So, Amen. At yeah. the very least, though, um, like I said, you finger on the pulse. You understand the art historical topics better than most people I know. You wake up and you eat, breathe, sleep it. And uh, this article is no exception. 
Elena, what are we talking about today? We are talking about Belazer. Oh, Belazer. <laughs> yeah. So, um, recently there's been a flurry of articles and a flurry of videos and essays about um, this painting that has been acquired by the Met currently. And this painting is uh, uh, was initially meant to, uh, or was initially featuring four people on it, but then suddenly it was featuring three people on it. <laughs> Where did the fourth one go? And the thing is that the it's it's a family portrait, right? So there's three uh, children of this one family on it, and then. Um, in the in the repainted version, there's a nice cloudy sky with a little bit of outline of some shape, maybe a person mm -hmm. there. Um, but the thing is, behind this cover up was actually a, a enslaved youth called Belazare, who was rediscovered and. Uh, given his rightful place on the painting uh, back, basically. Um, but, uh, no article has made art conservation sound so heroic than... Um, birthday. Happy birthday! Thanks. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> um, no, no article... Like, this article is really good because it makes... Art concert, like art conservationists and art conservators seem like superheroes, mm. which, you know, they are. But they also aren't. And they they're aren't. villains and heroes. It's it's complicated. It's complicated. And and so what's really interesting about this painting, and if you if you close your mind's eye and, and think about what are what is indicative of 19th century family portraiture, right? Where we're talking about the naturalist style. You've got weird children looking at you. You've got everyone finely dressed. This is clearly an upper class family. Um, in the American South, it, this particular portrait was done for a Louisiana based family. Mm -hmm. And so you've got the, the three white children all finely dressed in the foreground of this painting. And immediately behind these three children is a almost nonchalant youth leaning arms folded against a tree as he looks not necessarily directly at the viewer, but almost beyond. And, and, and Belazare, this, this youth, is 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 remarkable in a couple of ways, but like at at first blush, where this is really unique in art history is that this painting is large. It is a large scale portrait of of these four figures, but this is one of the first examples of what a naturalistic um rendering of a i mean of an enslaved person but also of like a black man in america it during this time especially like you don't you don't see this type of representation you don't get these types of portraits um and there's there's something really exciting about just how at ease he is in this painting, right? Like, this is obviously a very romanticized, um, and we'll get into, like, the style and everything in a second, but, like, the the youth is very relaxed, and, and mm -hmm. outside of the fact that there's this contrast between what it, like, the cognitive dissonance of, like, what is being seen and what is actually being told um, of the story, there's just the, the painting itself is very beautifully done, of this traditional style and and of course this reveal makes it all the sexier because where was he what happened what do you mean he was missing yeah it's it goes to show 
also like how history has changed over time and twice <laughs> um because yeah first it was painted as it was intended with uh Belisere, Belisere and the Frey children uh visible and yeah colorful and lively and then it was altered and then it was altered again yeah right back to the original um but how this really started um was um i want to say it started with a uh, simian uh simin uh jeremy simin who is the art collector who acquired this painting and who was looking for this painting for a really long time but i think it also started a bit before uh that yeah. i mean of course <laughs> it started uh it started with the making of the painting and then uh somehow somewhere along the lines uh, around 1900 is when it was repainted over and Belisere was covered up and then um he uh and then the painting came um was hidden in in the basement for a, a really long time in the house of the uh phrase um or the f descendants of the f of phrase and then after that, it went to a museum, uh, the New Orleans um, Museum. And what is it called again? Sorry. The New Orleans Museum. Was it the New Orleans Museum of Art? Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, indeed, it, it was given to the New Orleans Museum of Art. And then they also put it in their storage. And it was again in the storage for another 32 years or something. I feel like uh, that story is slightly more exciting to me. Like not, there's, there's so many aspects of the story that are so exciting to me. But the fact that this is another tale of, oh, we just had a priceless masterpiece in the attic or in the basement. Whoops. <sighs> yeah. This is but Antiques Roadshow all over again. It is, it is. And I want to talk a little bit uh, later about how complicit museums are in this history getting lost. Um, but yes, rewind <laughs> to uh, Belazare himself. Yeah. Um, I think him? I do. I think the story... So, right, we've got um, Jeremy Simeon, who as an art collector from Baton Rouge is acquires this painting um, is able to track it down through auction and, and acquires it and has it conserved further. Um, mm -hmm. In 2005, I believe it had been when it was de so, again, complicit museums, the new Orleans museum of art decommissions the original like covered up version or the, the covered up version um, in 2005, it gets purchased by another art collector who has it conserved. And that layer of paint that's been hiding our fourth figure is revealed to, to show this young, because he's 15, right? Like he's a very young boy, um, with these other three smaller children. And so all of a sudden this image pops up and Jeremy Simeon, um, someone of African uh, descent was able to like, has, has dedicated his life to, to collecting and studying and promoting through our history and just, and just finding a voice for the voiceless and, and demonstrating that representation in art has existed longer than the art history canon has accepted it. And so what art, Sim like what Simeon was able to do, um, was reach out to a Louisiana based historian and archivist, mm -hmm. uh, Katie Shannon, who researched the lives, like who, whose entire job is to research the lives of enslaved individuals. And for most people, this is, you know, this is something that you do through the archives. And what she says in a video that we watched was that it was unique to start with the painting mm -hmm. because you know, you first have to say, okay, well, who painted this? And then through bills of sale, you go, okay, well, who had not the, she said something in a video that like kind of struck me. It wasn't who was rich enough 
to own somebody else, but it was who was rich enough to pay for a portrait. Yeah. Yeah. Two very different. So, um, you have who's wealthy enough to, to commission a portrait. And from there you, you start the tearing through the family line and until they discovered in 1930, in 1837, this family portrait is commissioned by the Frey family Mm -hmm. and the, the census records and, and the property ledgers kind of break down this story of like who, who not only who's in it, but the, the moment where they're like reveal the name was really powerful Mm -hmm. Um, because it's, it's, it's right there. He is, he is another name on this ledger, but he is the only child that makes sense to be this mysterious fourth figure in, in the painting. Um, but that's, you know, that's, that's kind of like the, the how they get there. Um, I think his story is unique in the sense of because we had the bill of sale, you can then go back and go, all right, well, he in nineteen in eighteen thirty seven is here, but he was purchased in nine in eighteen. Why do I want to say nineteen? <laughs> he was purchased in eighteen twenty six or eighteen twenty eight, um, just six years after he was born in eighteen twenty two. Yeah, yeah, and he was. Uh, not an only child, and we know his mother's uh, name, but yeah, all of his other um, siblings were sold uh, away. I think only one wasn't. Um, right. But then uh, his mom, Sally, uh, and he were sold into the Frey family, and his mom was uh, appointed to be the cook, and uh, Belazer was the domestic as they call it. Yes. Uh, but these are house, like, like these are, these are interior positions, which is um, something that gets brought up often in the article of like, huh, these, these, they were, they were within a close proximity to the family. And, and that kind of starts the justification of, oh, well, why, why would they have this boy's portrait done? If, you know, if he was property to them or, or is there something more to it? Yeah. Yeah. And we might never know that. (laughs) We probably won't, um, unless we find, uh, Frederick Frey's diary or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Belazare was a part of this family's life and he had, um, we have, it's really hard to find, um, first of all, um, a, a, a slave being uh, portrayed in a painting and yeah. then finding a name for that slave is also really hard. And the fact that a lot of the letters don't even mention half of the people that were um, in the family's uh, possession yeah. Uh, is also like a lot of lost history, right? Um, and then Belazare kind of, um, because of this lack of documentation, he also becomes um, like, um, I don't remember how the, the word I'm looking for, um, like product of, yeah. of, of the of the time in the sense of after uh, Frederick Frey dies and he gets sold, sold into the evergreen plantation. Um, he, his, we know that he stayed there until 1861 and then we don't know what happened. This is when the civil war starts and he's just gone from the documentation. Maybe he survived. Maybe he didn't. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's frustrating um, that in a in a time, I mean, it would make sense when I think of it. Like, if we don't yeah. remember something that's from the 16th century or the 17th century, that would make sense. 
but by the 20th century, everything was being documented well early um, uh, or late uh, late 19th, 19th century. Way early 20th, yeah. yeah. Everything was already starting to be documented. And the fact that a lot of these people who were not considered as people at the time, which yeah. is also bonkers, uh, yeah. were not, they didn't even have their name written down is fucking frustrating. Um, or were not given permanent names or were just referred to and, and the subjectivity of what their daily life and experience could be. And, and right. This is speaking of it being modern history. There's, there's something like the first half of the story is just really heavy and really sad, but also really interesting because of the fact that it's this, this is a clear documentation that a commission for a portrait and and from a remarkably uh renowned artist i think that was kind of like another part of it is that the the artist in question um jacques something amon amon amons yeah um the artist jacques amon was a french portraitist who was who specifically worked on louisiana's elite mm-hmm. so so this is a this is a artist who brings a lot of respectability and class. And then what's also interesting about this is that the three children in this, in the foreground, um, this piece not only serves as like a beautiful family portrait, but it's also a memorial piece Mm -hmm. as what two of the children in that painting, um, die most likely of yellow fever later that year and then the third dies a little later on Mm -hmm. and so it it serves as a memorial piece and and when the painting is finally sold um i'm sorry when when the when belazare is sold after the death of frederick frey Mm -hmm. you this piece really is just a, a memory of what a snapshot of this family's life looked like um, which from a archivist perspective, from a historian perspective, it's, it's nice to have these, these vignettes into people's lives, um, mm-hmm. especially ones so, so delicately rendered for that gentility, the, mm-hmm. the nobility of, of how sweet these four faces look and, and understanding that it's more complicated than that, but that's, that's, Part one of what makes it interesting. Yeah. The fact that from early 1900s or early 19th century to late 19th century, it remains relatively untouched, right? It belongs to the family. And then it starts to become the inheritance game of now I'm going to bequeath this to my other child and they will continue to hold on to it until we get... (laughs) To about the 1900s. There's some really cool math and science that they do. I haven't seen the word uh, krakatur offered since uh, studying art history, like studying art conservation. So I was like, "Ah, ah, 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 I know that word. (laughs) But the idea of um, we know that there was an overpainting done because when you reveal it, you've got Belazare underneath it. But how people can more or less date as to when that painting happened. Like when the painting, the, the paint over job happened is um, the way that paint ages that it, it forms like different cracks. And so that crackling effect can then be dated against other pieces of the work. So you can tell like, Oh, this was an overpainting or this was done immediately afterwards or this was done 50 years later or in this case maybe 80 years after the the painting was done um which you know witchcraft witchcraft how could that possibly happen but this this idea that he was intentionally removed from the painting and even uh simeon says in his interview, like the the quote, like the fact that he was covered up haunted me. Mm -hmm. Unquote. Yeah. 
I will turn on the lights. Yes. As a dramatic effect for us. Please do. And then, like, pop up. <gasps> Whoa, light! Oh, what happened? Oh, where did you go? Uh, that was embarrassing. Anyway. Um, yes. Um, yeah, the... The turn of the century, something happened. We can very accurately, I, I love that we can be so accurate that we can say that it was around 1900, like we can say like almost the date of when the con conservation was done. Um, but that is the witchcraft of conservation. I don't understand it, but I love it. Um, but Science, baby. <laughs> who Who will ever believe it? Yeah, um, but it was uncovered, and it did go to, uh, it was in the possession of the New Orleans uh, Museum. That's where we left off with on that front. Yes, so then, it, it, yeah, because it, it travels down, it gets painted over in the 1900, mm -hmm. like in 1900, and then as it continues to go through the family, like there's there's an understanding that there's a fourth figure, but nobody really like knows who it is and at this point by like 1950 1960 nobody really knows who it is um, they don't even like it doesn't fit in their house so they just keep it in the basement anyways or in the attic yeah just throw it in the garage i i, I want fine. one day elena when we write a book i want to talk just specifically about masterworks found in places they shouldn't be <laughs> The Caravaggio comes to mind, but I just, one of these where it's like, damn, damn. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something. But, but then the New Orleans Museum of Art. And they don't do any better. <laughs> they don't do any better. They also put it in their collections and in their archives and then it's lost for 32 years and there was a segment of don't worry about it okay. don't worry about it I don't know what happened <laughs> there was a segment of um, the head of the New Orleans Museum talking about uh, how he regretted selling it oh eventually it was a mistake mistakes it happen a mistake in it mistakes in happen said. yeah and um he makes one decent argument in the sense that like so he makes one good argument and then it it, it immediately falls apart when you when you think about it right because in the the family the the Grassier family whose descendants from the Freys, um, they have documentation, kind of of like what the subject matter was, more or less who probably painted it, maybe who was in it, but like the documents that they gave essentially listed that the fourth figure was a. I don't remember what was exactly listed, but it was either as like favorite slave or as the 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 one uh, the enslaved person who was like responsible for taking care of the children. One of those like that's in a document that even the article that we read harkens back to, and the video that we watched harkens back to, and and yeah. so they they have proof that this fourth figure is is of African descent. Yes. Okay. The argument that this former director gives was, we didn't know who painted it, we didn't know who these people were, and the condition that it was in after 50, 60 plus years of not being properly maintained, restored, kept, was in such a condition that it was not exhibitionable, and that the cost to repair it, to restore it, was beyond what the museum was willing to put into it. That happens all the time. Yeah. Excuse me. That happens all the time. And that, I think, to your point earlier of, like, museum negligence, that's where we could really sink our teeth in. Especially, like, most museums 
can't afford to have a conservator on staff, m- let alone actually use conservator services um, because of the fact that it's it's so tedious. The, the attention and detail that goes into just preserving one piece, then the cost that goes into it, and a lot of these smaller institutions, like the New Orleans Museum of Art is not a large-scale institution. It, it holds a, a remarkable collection, but it is nothing like... It doesn't have fiscal resources. And so out of concerns for that, out of sheer laziness, out of perhaps a flippant disregard for another 19th century family portrait of some wealthy family in New Orleans, they just left it to essentially fade into oblivion in their basement. Yeah, and I mean... If you knew that, uh, I mean, if you couldn't see that there was a touch-up, and if you didn't know that there was a touch-up, then it's a different story. But you can clearly see the outline, and you clearly had the detail that there was an enslaved child on that painting, and you still put it away. I mean... In hindsight, it was a mistake. It was a mistake, Lenny. I just made the a only, mistake. I think the only uh, the only reason he said it was a mistake is because it sold for so much later on. Well, yeah. Well, for an undisclosed sum. Undisclosed. But, but it got a lot of attention now. Boy, howdy. Uh, because as a subject matter, this is so rare that even the curator of American art at the national at, at, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art um, said that she didn't even know these kinds of paintings existed, which is problematic all within itself. But uh, another like an ignorance to a lived reality. And I think it's something that like Jeremy Simeon really pushes is the fact that of course, you don't know what you don't know, but it is it is a bias. It is a it is a position of privilege to presume that these stories just don't exist because you had never seen it. So so clearly, if you don't know about it, then it can't possibly exist. Yeah. And I think even the New Orleans Museum of Art had a little bit of that because it's like, well, are we really going to put in the money to find out if what this person was saying was true and I mean, I think the worst fate could have been, like, what happens if you do the conservation work and it's not recognized for what the, like, the significant contribution to the field and to the, to the, to the art world it has made. And it still goes back into storage. But that's, but that's a bad excuse to not do conservation. Like, but. <laughs> I mean, to be the devil's advocate here, um, sure. conservation is expensive. There's not a lot of conservators, conservators, um, right? And they it does take a long time and uh, investment, um, and the museums don't have funding as much as as they would need to conserve every single work that's in their co- collection. They can barely archive everything in their collection was it the British was it the met oh, <laughs> oh man i thought we were gonna do that article to be fair and then this 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 blew that story out of the water well that one's also very interesting we can also do that one but i want That's more to come out and i want that guy to be arrested um well so. if it was him i don't know you know how i it feel was about connected Arthur. to his paypal his paypal <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny sorry guys uh, th- th- there was a Tangent. scandal at the British Museum but anyways archiving um, archiving archiving we should mention what that scandal is now we're just like, leaving them for hanging <laughs> no you're right um, you know uh, sometimes it's important to listen disclaimer it's really important to archive your collection because it preserves and maintains the, the, the record of your collection for 
future generations to enjoy it and it makes it more accessible because then people don't like blah blah blah. Um it's also really important because if things start going missing from your collection and you don't realize it because somebody has been putting it on uh eBay and just selling one of a kind memorabilia for uh, a while and you and don't even know like three percent of the whole price or I don't know one percent like of the price? less it was like he was selling these ancient um artifacts and 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 ceramics and and just cultural heritage being sold for like 12 to 15 pounds on eBay just quick That's cash insane. style insane. oh man this is so funny but but again they don't they a didn't know what was happening because they didn't have a record and so they had no idea what was happening because they weren't recording that these pieces were missing. And two, they don't even know what all was taken because they don't have a record of everything that they've owned. They don't know how many things have been taken. They don't know. Because <laughs> did he sell everything or other people fencing them or... Uh they did arrest what was it the curator and and have kind of sort of like revealed the scandal and he's claiming he doesn't he didn't do it but yeah so funny yeah. <laughs> i mean but. but sometimes museums just sell their shit you know so it you know it's It's so funny to but, me. It's so, but that also yeah. comes into the play of the negligence of museums. Um, yeah, they they don't archive properly. They don't take care of their archives properly. They don't hire people to take care of those archives properly. Fucking hire yeah. people. Um, and in the end, history gets rewritten and lost in the background, and. Only if we're lucky, years later, we find something like the, like Belisaire, and we are like, yes, this kid existed, and he, we finally know, and can honor their life properly, yeah. as opposed to him sitting in the basement and for another decade under a layer of paint. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's so, it's so interesting. Um, it was very clear that people have been trying to erase Belazare and you no, know, God knows how many countless others from the art historical record to remove their significance from history, from, uh, a lived truth. And a lot of it is done in, while well, we'll never know exactly why these actions were taken. There are plenty of fear and hate motivated purposes and this integrity of preserving a, an idyllic front to cover up something so sinister mm. as slavery and just the ownership of other human beings and this this is so what is what is remarkable about Belazare and his story is that we do get to know his name. We do get to see him depicted and really depicted in a noble, regal, naturalistic style. Um this this boy is rendered and captured beautifully and and the fact that we get to enjoy this, right? This, this notion that this is more than this is more than just a painting that was sitting in a basement. This is more than just a portrait of three kids and their presumable caretaker. This is more than just like another collectible. This, this defines a, a really unique pivot in putting in the work and and finding these these treasure troves of of history and uh human connection yeah 
Indeed. Indeed. I think the New Orleans Museum of Art is just upset that they only sold it for six thousand dollars. That's what that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted uh, more out of it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, or at least some n- n- like for them, their name not to be so sullied in these articles because they did keep it. For 32 years. I, um, I don't know. Maybe, you know, if you don't want your name to be Sully, don't, don't do silly things. Or recklessly what? negligent things. I... What? <laughs> That's the first I've heard of something like that. Consequences to my actions? Not Never. in this economy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any final thoughts? Um, Art conservation is remarkable because truly by applying solvent to varnish and removing one layer of paint, a whole story was uncovered and this priceless work can finally be given the, the space and recognition that it perhaps never intended to 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 hold but is is now able to to take precedent in the stories that we have going forward about why why these stories are important and why these narratives matter and and why like you can't just half ass a a an accession of, of the work, right? Like you can't just accept that this amateurish cover up was done. And therefore the piece itself is no longer important because it's been, it's not in a exhibitional state. Hmm. I, it's just, it's, sometimes you need to go beyond what is expected of you as an institution and, and just, take ownership of, of the pieces under your stewardship. If you're going to claim that you can do a better job than anyone else, like don't, don't do this. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's uh history needs to be remembered. Yeah. We do not stand by erasing history here at Biwat. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I hope that more, uh, while I doubt the sincerity of the Met in acquiring a piece like this and showcasing it the way they have been showcasing it to be authentic. Sure. I do still welcome it because I think it will set a precedent for other big museums to also start looking into maybe their own archives or looking at pieces um, that are similar to this that also feature um, people, black people in, in the paintings or in the works um, and maybe acquire them or display them. And yeah, just bring more awareness. I mean, this is a history that happened and it should be remembered and it should be displayed. But yeah. It just feels like a bad Photoshop job. It does. You know, tacky. You can even blur it properly. It's tasteless. (laughs) Ugh. 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 Yeah. If you can see it, it's just, he's right there. He's right there. He's right there. He's a ghost. Uh, the, the ghosting, it's just, it's right there. Amateurs, amateurs. Mm. And in hindsight, Elena, it was a mistake. Mistakes happen. Mistakes. Fuck off. <laughs> uh.
<sighs> anyway. I think I have I I I I think I have feelings about it being displayed at the Met. Not because I don't think the Met could, you know, do the proper work, but there's something about northern institutions taking southern institution like taking southern mm-hmm. culture and displaying it in this like cultural hub and and I think there are many institutions that could tell the same story. I think selling it to the Met is a part of this, like this fame seeking, this attention grabbing, this, this hope for publicity. And I, again, I'm fine with all of that, but I think the, the narrative of it leaving Louisiana also then now removes it from context. And how many times do we have to remove cultural heritage from its its in situ it's 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 like how many times do we have to remove cultural heritage from its birthplace in order to give it value yeah yeah return the benin bronzes and the rest of the artifacts that you have stolen please and um we will keep on advocating for that every day also return it to louisiana maybe (laughs) you know if it's gonna be if it's gonna be so important and so exciting and the med is so proud of this piece then let's give us some more nola base like give us some more louisiana base like archival records and and mm-hmm. um create projects specifically dedicated to like maintaining personal histories so that names like this don't get lost and do the hard work so that it's mm-hmm. not just you know a publicity stunt yeah yeah we'll see i guess for more mistakes reversed by the genius of art conservation newsletters, blog posts, transcripts, and more. Head on over to our website at bywartpod.com. You can also find us at bywartpod on, on Instagram and YouTube. And YouTube. Yes. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I've completely forgot. You've 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 added you added YouTube and that's it. Game <laughs> over. Us off. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because of course you can check us out on Patreon. Our Patreon is the best way to support us. If you like the work that we're doing here at BiWAP, come say hi. <gasps> wash your face. Nope. Don't touch. Wash your face too. <laughs> I mean, wash your face. It's good for your skincare. Wash your hands. <laughs> Don't touch your face. <laughs> and remember. When in doubt, titty out. <laughs> I just one of these days, you know, it's just gonna be a. It's just. It's just we're on we're video just gonna go already. For it. It's time. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>